What's up, guys? I'm back with another movie review. It's my last one for today. I've done like half a dozen today. Um, this one is from Arrow Films. It's called Eric the Conqueror. I just got a screener for it, so I can't show you any pretty disc artwork, but it does have pretty cool looking artwork. Um, this is a sword and sandal Viking movie. Um, the main reason I think it kind of still has prominence, even though it's well made and it's a decent movie, um, is because it was directed by Mario Bava, um, who is best known for horror, really stylish horror movies. And you can't really see a lot of it here, but, I mean, there are little touches of his style. But it's just so far removed from his later work. So if you're only here because of Mario Bava and his horror work, I mean, it's interesting to see some of his early uh, films that aren't horror. But I don't know that you'll be, like, in love with it just because it's a Mario Bava movie. This one seems like it's kind of more uh, utilitarian direction as opposed to his own style that he would become known for. Um, the movie follows a war between... Uh, vikings and the british or the english and in the beginning of the movie there's a real issue pops up because the general or whatever of the uh of the british tribe is supposed to is supposed to uh negotiate and use diplomacy with the vikings and instead he just fucking slaughters them uh, including the king so like there's not a lot of room for negotiation and diplomacy when the king is dead right so the british king is pissed off and he ain't gonna have it so uh, the general ends up murdering him because he's not going to put up with his shit. Um, the sons of the Viking king um, are still alive. One of them is taken by the widowed queen, and the other one is taken in by the Vikings. So they're raised in very different worlds. One brother is is with like the nobility and the wealth, and you know of the uh, of the British Empire, and the other brother is raised in kind of like the poor conditions, but like rough and tumble conditions of the Viking world. And, of course, eventually they end up crossing paths again uh, with one leading the Viking troops and the other leading the British troops. And it becomes a real issue, especially because one of the, the Viking brother ends up kidnapping the queen, who's essentially become the mother of uh, the, the brother who was raised in, among the British. It might sound complicated. It's not. Um, it's just a very traditional Viking sword and sandal movie. It does have some fun action sequences. It's got Cameron Mitchell in it, which is always fun. Um, I, there's not really a lot to single out to, to, to make this stand out from other similar movies. Um, it does have some interesting set pieces. It's got a weird crucifixion scene that was really interesting. Um, but it really doesn't have a lot of like wow moments. Um, a lot of it just feels kind of like a standard sword and sandal movie, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, these kind of movies, if you like them, you don't need them to be super crazy or super uh, original. And this is definitely well made uh, considering... You know, for the genre, I think it's very well made. Um, again, if you're mainly here for Mario Bava, I don't know that you'll be super into it just because it's so much different than his other work. But, I mean, even if you're not, it's just cool to see some of the other stuff that he did and to kind of see the seeds being planted for what would pay off uh, later on in his career. Again, I don't have the disc. Or I have the disc, but I don't have the cool artwork and everything. This is just a press screener copy. Um, the transfer looks really good. Um, there's still some rough spots and soft spots, but, I mean, come on. It's uh, not exactly a super high-profile movie, even with Baba attached. It hasn't found a huge audience. Um, I don't remember what the extras are. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I didn't watch any of them. Um, I just watched the movie. Um, but the movie looks great, and to me, that's what matters when it comes to buying a disc. Uh, you can get the disc Amazon anywhere else that sells movies. Um, I think this would be of most interest to people who like kind of old-school action, uh, sword and sandal, you know, gladiator viking type movies it is fun in that sense i would definitely want to keep it in my collection just because i like kind of cheesy action movies and this one definitely has that like old school i don't really know how to put it like valiant warriors and you know nobility and codes of honor and all that kind of stuff and i think that's really cool i like the gladiator movies and sword and sandal movies so i like this one um it but like i said it's hard to recommend to a lot of people because it is a pretty specific genre but i think it's definitely worth seeking out if you're into it or if you just want to see some of Baba's early work. I know it's kind of a weird review, but I don't really know what else to say What else to say about it. If you like sword and sandal movies, you will more than likely really like this one. Um, that's all I got for you on this one. If you like the review and you want to see more, I did write a full review of it on uh, markfusion.com. And then I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch at markfusion. I appreciate you watching, and I'll have some more reviews up soon.